So guys from the channel, welcome for another video. Today what I'm going to bring you here is the module part with SG3525 part 2. He asked me, and this module worked very well, perfect, and so I decided to bring it to you and make it available to but you But first there. subscribe to my channel, leave your likes, share the video with your friends, so it's motivating me to bring videos like this to you guys. When there's no like and no sharing, then there's that lack of motivation and that discourages any content creator, so give me that support, give me that strength, because I can have more commitment to you. So let's so here is, as promised, version 2.0 of the SG3525 module. So this version 2.0 was a board 50mm by 40mm high and 50mm wide, let's see the date I made this module here was May 21st 2021 so it's been a long time here, and I only made it available to someone who is a member of the channel and this module here, if you know how to use it, will serve both for switched power mainly, and for inverter too. You just have to make a scheme that you can use. He had the opportunity to make this module work so much through his video, it's a test that I don't like to bring anything without testing, I saw it working, and I'm bringing it here for you, right? He made a short video, but it is proof that this module is 100% functional. So this module here it uses an 817 opticoupler, I don't even do layout in Proteus anymore, I do it now in Sprint Layout, as you know there, you're watching my videos, so I designed in Proteus in a way that I couldn't see in 3D, so the components, as you can see, exactly where they would fit. So that's how the module was, you see, it's very compact, these parts of the hole here, this is where you'll put a terminal that I'll show you to connect to the board, it's good that it takes up less space on the main board, where they go the transformers, whether for switching power supply or inverter, right? Or for an iron transformer, inverter, it's an expensive module that everyone can use. So its features here are, soft start that gives that soft start to inverter, this is very good, here on pin 7 there is that dead time that is very important for switched power supply, especially for inverter as well. So here guys the dead time if it has turned on, so you notice that when the logic level is high, the MOSFET is turned on, there is this part of this time here that is turned off, right? So this part that is turned off is where we say it's dead time, when it turns off, there's this interval of time until it turns on, then it stays on, then it turns off, then it stays off this time here until it turns on, and so successively. So more or less what dead time is like and that's very important. So coming back here we have a frequency potentiometer, you can put those little blue ones, which are small squares, which is very good, it is very good to be able to regulate the frequency, here the frequency capacitor, you can put one NF, I didn't leave values here, both resistance and training, as this is optional, it depends on the frequency you want to work, right? Here it's a jumper, a resistor that goes from dead time, it's on top of the capacitor, it's not in the negative area, so that's why there's this jumper here. So the rest of the components I won't comment, here is a 1000 UF capacitor as filtering, a LED diode, a 2K resistor to limit the current to the LED, and here we take pin 9 and we put it in the 100 NF capacitor together with the negative, and if by chance you reverse the polarity or burn the SG, there is a diode 1 and 4007 here, inversely polarized, where it only passes negative here, see? So if you put the positive it will stay in its cathode and it won't allow you to leave the positive and negative for the CI and it will never burn, these are the output for PWM, here is the positive input and here is the negative input, so it is mandatory to go through the protection diode, with a drop of 0.7 more or less this in practice drops to 1V. And here these two pins are from the feedback you will get from the switching power supply, after the TL431 or its resistor divider and hear it. Already has a 1K resistor to limit the current to the PC817 LED which is the opticoupler, it has a 1K resistor in parallel with the LED diode, this asterisk identifies the anode of the opticoupler diode, usually, it is showing there on the screen, where there is this little mark that you can place, solder in this position. If inverting the transistor part will stay here, the feedback part will never work, okay? Here we have the part of pin 16 which is the 5V reference, we put two 10K resistors in order to have the 2.5V reference, send it to pin 2 in this part it has the operational amplifier, inverting input and the input not inverter of the CI, and we inject this signal on pin 2, 
and here with this 1K resistor to the negative, we take the collector emitter of PC817. So that's more or less the theory, right? I'll leave the scheme there for you, the theory of this module there, okay? Both the layout and the layout. So let's see the video that the channel subscriber sent me, so we can see how the module works in some images that it was assembled so that you have an idea, so that you can assemble yours, so let's go. So guys, we are already here in the module folder with SG3525, this first photo that the subscriber sent me of how our module looked like, right? Here the symbol of the channel, here are the terminals, if you want to put it to be able to plug into the board, it will be very good, so here the optocoupler brand, so you can place it in the right way, on the anode ball. The polarity inversion protection diode here, in case something happens so that it can protect the CI, because here in my city it is 8 reis, it is very expensive. Here the two jumpers, unfortunately there was no way to avoid jumpers, it happens, right? Here is the picture of the waveform, square wave, and here, the frequency of 35 kHz, okay? So you can make a 35 kHz inverter and normally, increase the frequency, if I'm not mistaken, has reached 100 kHz, very good indeed. And here the video he recorded at his work, I'm going to pause here and you will see the module working perfectly on the breadboard, and there is the frequency of 33.4 kHz, so the module is nailed there working perfectly. So, just download it there in the description, subscribe to my channel, leave a like that will make me very happy and motivate me to bring more projects. And that's it guys, it's there for you, if you liked the video, leave your jewel, subscribe to the channel, strengthening it to grow, share it with your friends. I count on your help, stay with God and until the next video.